Hello, um, Angel Felix. This is R for the S. Ah, no, the data science community thing now. And we are discussing uh, the book Explanatory uh, Modeling, I think it's the book, Explanatory Model Analysis. In the chapter 11, we are talking about the Sitirius Paribus Oscillations as a measure of importance. And that's the objective of, the, of this chapter. So let's talk about the base idea. If an exploratory variable have a large influence in a prediction for a particular instance, so because we are talking about the local level explorations, then its corresponding uh, CP profile must present large fluctuations. If the exploratory variable is a have little influence on prediction for a particular instance, then is corresponding CP profile must be same bare frustrations and be close to original prediction of the model. And the sum of the difference between the profile and the prediction across all possible values of the prediction variable, uh, exploratory variable should be close to zero. So that's that that's the main point. You if we remember the prior chapter, we were talking about how the value, the prediction changes if we fit all the other columns and just change one. And that case, it, you see that the fluctuations are not important because all are very close to the number. If in the all, in the worst case, if there is no fluctuation, so changing that variable doesn't have any importance to our prediction. And we also can see that in a graphical way. The sum of difference can be represented as the area between the profile and the line of a prediction level. For example, if we see the, the age, we see that we have some probability to survive here at this point, because that's the person that we are studying. Is, his name is Henry. Henry has this age, and he had this pro, he had the mother predict this probability to survive. And we can see how if the person would be younger, it will have higher probabilities or it will other also will have worse probabilities. And we see that the chain in this variable is important because if you zoom all the area across or respect to this line, uh, then uh, you will have the, the importance that we want to see. If we compare that with the patch that you go to, to with brothers, I think that's that's the variables. No, it's like no parents. No, it's like with parents or children. That that's the variable. How many parents or right. children do you have? Parents and children, yes. Parents and children. Then we see that the variation is really low. So this variable is not so important. And this is in the continuous world. If we pick the same number, you see the like 24%, a little bit more than 25, the same number that we were plotting here. Now in the vertical asset, we can see how if we change the class from the first class, that we we see how the probability changes across different classes. And we see more variation here than that we see here in the uh, embarked position. And also we can see that the sets also have a, a really important change. So if he changed from male to female, he would increase a lot, like more than 50%, the probability of surviving just by the, the change in that category. So it's the same. So we will be summing all these difference Maybe the difference in this way or difference across all the columns. Now we understand that we can compare the fluctuations. Let's go to the formulas. It's important that we remember how is calculated the CP profile for our uh, observation of interest. That is as a uh, asterisk. 
So the function is really easy. We just need to take the our uh, row, our row, because we are using data frames, uh, our row and just change the value in the column J for the value C, uh, Z, Z. And that's the, the function that we, we were exploring. Now, and the variable important is calculating using this, this function. And, and we read it, we see that is the sum, because that's sum for continuous variables. It's not, uh, in, in is not something hard, just a sum of the, of the distances. And what's the distance? The distance from the new value to the original value of prediction. And then we have to multiply by the distribution for our uh, density, expected absolute density. That is the J function. And that's really interesting because, for example, imagine Henry have, you, we see these results that, hey, we, you could increase your probability if you were younger, for example. If you have a near zero years or two years. But the point is, even though the, the, the change is big, if there wasn't many people at that age, so that's a strange number, then uh, we won't take that number really seriously. If you know, oh, for example, you have a cost. Oh, we normally, you can uh, spend this value from in this range, but you take a uh, go out this range, you will create more value. But if that value wasn't present in the original data, uh, in this variable importance, we don't take that in consideration. So just imagine that if the probability for getting that C value is really low, then the, the, the prediction that or the difference of prediction, it doesn't matter. So you need to have both cases. That should be a possible number and also have a huge difference. And to me, it seems really good. And also you can take this uh, as an expected value because um, when you take a value and multiply by the probability is also a way to calculate the expected value in probabilities. Uh, also, if, you, if we were using, for example, a uniform distribution, that would be just taking a mean. And we are going to see those cases. Even though this method is really good and really easy to understand at this point, we need to understand that we don't know the true distribution. We see the sample distribution of the observation. It's unknown. Even though we, we can estimate it, but the true value, we, we don't know it for real. So we have two, two alternatives. We can assume, and you remember, assume the uniform distribution. So you just need to take the mean of all the values. Here we are watching a discrete function because we don't make integrals in this case. They have two alternatives. If we are talking about categorical, they take all the unit values and that's it. And that's discrete. But for the un for the continuous variable, they take equidistant grid. So you would pick one number every every so sentence. You know, that that's the way they do it. So they always use a mean across those values. Like, oh, it's not discrete. We will make it discrete, <laughs> and that's it. Because we don't know really the functions to make the integral, and that's a to me it's a really clear uh, clear. Uh, clever way to solve that problem. Of course, uh, you know that this value would change if you change the grid. If you are using a different grid to me, of course, you will have a different uh, variable importance, but the result, the conclusion should be the same. Sorry.
Sorry, guys. And the other way is to use the empirical distribution. It takes more computation time to, because you will need, because this is useful if you have many values in your data set. And you will need to calculate the difference between the original prediction and the change of value for all the values in your data set. So you have 1 million rows. That would take some time. No crazy time, you know, if we compare to the training times. But that would take more, more time than using just the uniform distribution. But this is more accurate, especially if the distribution of the J variable is really different to the to the uniform distribution. Do you have some comments so far before moving? No, this is this is this is good. Thank you. Uh clear presentation here. Okay. Now they have a really important paragraph in this session. They they compare the local versus global importance. And they make a really simple but a really clever example. Just imagine that the real function that we are exploring is this, just an interaction of two variables. The values of both variables go from zero to one. Really easy. The global, globally, both variables are equally important. So it doesn't matter whether what, if you change something here, you should tell that it's the same because you are taking the product of both numbers. Uh, but that's not the same depending on the observation we are exploring for the local case. If we see in the example that the observation of interest have S1 equals zero and S2 equals one, then the importance of S1 would be larger than the S2. And the, the, the situation is this. The CP profile would for, for any C, C number would be C. Because when you change when you change any value of f one, then it was you will just take the product from the c value for plus one, so you will always get c. You will have a really important change, but if you do it the other way around and you fit the s one and then change the s two, it doesn't matter how much s two changes because it's multiplied by zero. So you will have a zero changes in your CP oscillations. So the S2 variable have no importance for this prediction. And that's a really important point to understand that for this particular observation, if you want to improve or decrease your results, you need to change S1. There is nothing to change from S2. Now, let's go to the Henry example again. It's from the random model, random forest model. And here he's comparing what are the results using the uniform distribution and the empirical distribution. We see in the empirical distribution that the gender, the age, the class are really important for for both cases. You will see gender, age, and class are in the top. But the only difference, the important difference in the weird case is the sibling variables, siblings and spouse. Because we see that is low here and high here. And that's do it because the, the real distribution of the that variable is far away from uniform. It's like it's really a skewed. It's really a skewed distribution because most of people went with zero siblings or spouses, and some with one and few and really few with two or, or plus. So that's why. 
in most of the cases, if you have enough data, yes, it, oh, it's better to use the empirical distribution. That's the, the best approximation. Unless that you, you don't have enough observation to say, hey, I don't have enough observation to really see the distribution of this variable. So you can use the uniform distribution in that case. Because if you see the, the, the response is a little bit acceptable. The, we are really sure that fair and patch are not the most important ones, for example, or embarked. Yeah. They, they agree that they are not the most important variables in this in these scenarios, in this model. Uh, it does not describe how the variables influence the prediction. In every word order, is it, this is here are some limitations of this process. So in the prior variable importance, we were watching, for example, the sign if this is a negative effect or a positive effect, we don't know really. That's why we always need to go and see the CP profile of each variable to know, okay, the H is important, but it's a decreasing or increasing variable. So we see that it's a negative variable in this case. And we see how the sibling is a positive one. So, you need always you you start watching the importance in the in this chart, but then you will need to go always to the CP profiles to configure the result and how to interpret how to take take action. Yeah, that's that's a really good point, uh, Angel. I mean, I think the use case for for what we're learning uh, in in this chapter is is you know you have a ton of variables, right? So this uh, this is kind of a first stop in figuring out which which variables you want to do a deep dive on, right? And then the, the CP profile could answer that question for a handful of, of variables once you've identified those, right? Correct. That's the, that's the main point. And we can see here in the data table of pros and cons of all this. So we have here that the... Not time consuming, yeah, it depends. So I, I just put a minus here because it depends you use the the empirical or the uniform distribution. Uh, it's useful. Those charts are useful for sensitivity analysis, so you can go deeper with this with this technique. Uh, it also is easy to understand with large number of variables. So you can go and see the importance variable first and then go deeper to the ones that really matter. And also helps to avoid fast positive findings. That's really important because you will get really consistent results. It's not like, ah, it depends on the order. No, it doesn't matter the order. You always get the same, uh, the same variable. So, this is maybe the best one. Maybe I would say that it's not so easy to explain to non-statistical people, uh, you know, like, hey, it's important, but why? Why is this number? You compare to the BD plots because they were just the, the coefficients and they were summing. Uh, to explain maybe this, this part, the sum up to the importance, they, they, they don't match that possibility. The the sharpie values, the bear plus are better to make that. But I think that for us, and um, I would love to make this. I, I really like this this approach. Uh, yeah. The other one was line and the the auto really made sure to understand that hey, for tabular data, don't use line, please. Use it for for pictures. You said for this, where the concept of what is close is clear. So you know that if you have a sentence, the words inside that sentence have some sense, you know. If you are using some pizza, you know what is close. You have a relative idea what is close and you don't need to make a scientific, you know. And the point is with tabular data, as you increase the number of columns, it's hard to know what is close enough to be linear. So yeah, for, for Lime, really useful for no tabular data. So also you can manage many variables and also 
it's not many time consuming because it's just a linear regression or a lasso regression. I think that that's all. Uh, I know I know we have more examples, but that's all the theory. That's all the theory. Now let's see the practical example. We use the archives to to get the original data, the imputed data, the random forest, and also the observation that we want to explore. Henry have his first class, male of 47 age, with no siblings, with no uh, parents or child. He paid $25 for his ticket and embarked in Sherborne. We just know to to call the library that we are using that we use to to train the mother, calling daylets, uh, to create the explainer. They created, and they just want to confirm here if the prediction function is working. If it's not working in this in this way, you should need to to place it here in the explainer, bay, depending on your model. And that was the value that we were also always watching. 25, almost 25% chance to survive, a really low one. Then if we want to use the uniform, use this type oscillation uni, we pass the model, the explain, the explain object with the observation. And then we see the oscillations in a data frame. The, we also can change the ID to the name that we want to display and use the plot function with that data frame. If, if we create a ggplot2 object that we can also add titles to, to clarify what we are watching. Now we have the gender, the symbols again, the same, because that's the same plot that we saw before. We are just showing how to do it in R. Now we just need to change to empirical. Then we can use, if we want just to plot because it's the same process, just changing the to empirical. Uh, you can mutate and change the column, use the plot and add the, 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 the title that we want to, to see. Now we see symbols below. And also uh, you can create for the uniform distribution, uh, your your own grid of variables. No, I want to go at this space the, for the numeric variables, the continuous variables. And also you can limit the number of variables that you want to see. Now you want to, to center my attention in gender, age, class, and fair. And, the, and here you can see the, the, the results. The gender is the most important one and then we have Asian class, pretty close ones to the other. Uh, here we can, yeah, just plotting the same, the same plot that we saw, the same numbers that we saw here. We can see how Asian class are really close to the other, but the most important one was the sets at that moment. And that's it. I don't know if you have any comments. Ah, and they also say that they don't have any Python implementation yet to this uh, to this interpretation model. Uh, yeah, what, one key, key point uh, that was noted in the chapter was that if you put in custom ranges for your variables, mm -hmm. uh, the method will limit the computation to to the ranges that you specified. Um, yes, of course, because you are summing uh, one by one. If you if you make a shorter range, so you are adding more k, you know, more k that you need to compute for each column. Yes, but I, I took that to mean it. It's also true of the empirical distribution as well. I mean, it, you know, it will limit to whatever values, whatever ranges you're, you're limiting it to. You um, know, that's interesting because the 
For example, in the right. unit form, you can explore variables that wasn't present in your data set. For example, you can really do it uh, because you are assuming that all numbers, you know, have the same probability to appear in your data set. But in this case, the range would be limited to what you saw in the data set. Yep, that's right. So I'm trying to think of a, a use case there. You know, maybe if you have a very large data set, uh, you know, the empirical variable importance may take a very long time. You want a shortcut. Maybe, you know, your variable is not uniformly distributed, uh, but you could limit the range, right? Maybe you're only interested in a range that's kind of close to your prediction anyway. Um, mm, that would be maybe to, to filter your original data frame could be. Right. Uh, for example, let me I'll, see. I'll, for I'll, example, I'll, you need to provide. I will suggest in that situation, Aaron, I will suggest mm -hmm. to sample your data set. Mm -hmm. Okay. Instead of, let, let's say you have a million, you know, uh, rows, right? A million observations. Uh, mm -hmm. Try to take half of it that is representative of that million and try it. Okay. Uh, you know, when, when I'm doing, let's say, exploratory analysis in a real world uh, data set, and data set is huge. For example, you know, uh, 100 million observations, I just take a sample of it, okay? And I try to stratify on, you know, certain, you know, key, for example, the target, stratify to the target to see, you know, that I get a more representative sample, and then, you know, I'll work with that. Because it's, it's almost impossible to work with the 100 billion, okay? Just to get an Instagram, you know, it will take uh, yeah. hours. Yeah, so too much just, time. Just, just, just sample, just stratify sampling could be... Uh, a, a good a good choice there. Yeah, we'll yep. be. that's a good you point. Can, you, you can pass it here, you know. Yep. When you are getting the explainer, you can sample before passing to this argument. Correct, yes. So it's, it, it's also easy to do it with these, with, the, with these functions. Uh, but there could also be, let's say, you know, kind of outlier values for your explanatory vari variables that mm -hmm. you know you, you maybe don't want to have such an extreme influence on your your variable importance right because you shouldn't have you know they shouldn't have because even though they are extreme uh, if you use the empirical distribution they will be getting based on right. this probability yep no i understand that but I, i'm Trying to think through a situation again where where maybe computation time is is an issue. Yeah, that that could be also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, I I don't see you know computation make this computation as crazy. You know, uh, I I don't because maybe you have many columns because that that may be the combination. You have a uh, two hundred columns and you have. More than one million, yeah, rows. Yeah, computation is a problem. It doesn't matter. I don't know how you would train your model. So you would need to make a down sample or just taking a sample of your data. Because if you compare this to run a random forest or, or a IG boost, that's a really simple operation. It does look like a simple operation overall. This is, you know. Yeah. This it's is not like like mean absolute deviation. Mm -hmm. It's not like a crazy computation. You are not like bootstrapping, for example. Bootstrapping is really intensive because mm -hmm. you you take for each variable, you are resampling or for each row or for each each group. But it doesn't. It, it's not like that. You know, it's not like as big. Yeah, I, I would I would always be the empirical. Unless I have just really few observations, and I don't know what's the distribution. Like I have a uh, thirty observations, fifty observations. Uh, I will use the uniform in that case. But otherwise, the, the empirical. And um, I know that if we are using modern machine learning and not just linear models. Uh, you will need to to sample your data set before training your model. So use the same sample data. Well, I think that it was good. So I think we can end the chapter.
and see you next week guys